And thus far with our study of graph theory, we've been trying to visit all the vertices, each only once, or all the paths or edges, each only once. But sometimes we don't need to visit each only once. We just want to make sure everything's connected. And that's going to bring about our last question for graph theory. What if we just want to connect all the vertices? This is useful if you're making a phone network, an internet network, or something, and you just want to make sure everything's connected to each other. And the way we represent this is with what is called a spanning tree. A spanning tree basically is just a connected graph with all vertices connected, but no circuits. In other words, you can't loop back around. We just connected everything. And to kind of illustrate some spanning trees, I'm going to show you three spanning trees for the same arrangement of dots, one, two, and three. And these dots are essentially, if I was good at copying, um, exactly identical. And a spanning tree might just connect them in order, like that. Or it might connect them in a different order, like that. Or it might connect them maybe all to one point. We could shift the point. There's lots of different spanning trees. And so instead of just making a spanning tree, what we might be more interested in is finding what's called the minimum cost spanning tree, or the one with the smallest total edge weight. If we were going to connect several homes with some, or maybe to a common well or to a common phone network, we want to make sure that the cost to connect them all is as small as possible. And the way we can do that is with Krishalk's algorithm. And again, I might be pronouncing that wrong. But the process we go through with Krishalk's algorithm is we select the cheapest unused edge. And then we're going to repeat that process unless adding the edge creates a circuit. Because we said no circuits allowed with these spanning trees. And we keep going until we can stop because all vertices are included in the spanning tree. So let's take a look at an example and see if we can apply Krishkalk's algorithm to this graph. And we're going to connect each dot to each dot as a potential line that could be included in the spanning tree. So if I label A, we have to connect it to B and C. We have to connect it to D and E. And we also have to connect it to F. But then we also have to connect b to c, b to e, b to d, and b to f. We have to connect c to d, c to e, and c to f, d to e, and d to f, and e to f. Those are all our potential connections. 
Now we've priced out each of the connections. The AB connection is 11. The BD is 43. The DF is 45. The FE is 19. The CE is 37. The CA is 33. Maybe filling in the gaps here between on the left. We'll call AD 14, AF 15, and AE 41. Uh, B needs to be connected with a 25 to C, a 23 to E. I'm going to move it down just to avoid confusion. And a 13 over to F. D, we've already got the A connection at 14. So we'll call 17 down to C, 16 down to the E. Um, the F to C isn't done. That's We're going to call that 36. And is that all of the lines? They all have a weight now? Yes, they all have a weight now. And so we're going to look at this weight. And the algorithm says we're going to find the cheapest unused edge. And the smallest number I see on there is the 11. So I'm going to say that the cheapest is that AB connection, which is worth 11. Now I look at the remaining numbers. And the remaining smallest number looks like it's a 13, that B to F connection. So now the cheapest is BF. It's worth 13. Next cheapest, I see a 14 on there. The cheapest now is from A to D. That's worth 14. My next cheapest is going to be AF at 15. But what I want to note about AF is AF will create a circuit. If I did AF, we'd have a circuit from A, B, F, and back to A, making that triangle. We cannot create a circuit, so AF is going to be skipped. So we're going to skip the 15. Let's go ahead and cross that off. We're never going to use that one. So our next cheapest looks like it's the number 16, connecting D to E. So now the cheapest is DE. It's worth 16. And next cheapest number I see on there is 17. So we're going to connect D to C. And that's worth 17. And what I want to notice now, what I've done with highlighting these yellow edges, is we've connected every vertex. It's possible to get from every vertex to another vertex using just the yellow highlighted parts. And so we will say we have all vertices visited or connected with weight or value if we add up all these numbers. 11 plus 13 plus 14 plus 16 plus 17 is 71. So the weight is 71 for the minimum cost spanning tree. That's really all there is to spanning trees. It's quite a nice algorithm. It is an efficient and optimal algorithm in that it will always give us the best way to connect all the dots or all the vertices together. So it's your turn to practice some of these spanning trees on your own. Good luck.